Okay, going back. Now this is, again, schematic anatomy. But halfway across the rib cage is the chest muscles or the pectorials. So again, you're looking like here's your center line. So you look from side to side how much of a curve. Okay, then the base of the rib cage would be here, but the stomach muscles fit into that. The first tier of the stomach muscles follows the curve of that rib cage. These are the six packs. The second one is at the belt line. Under the second one is where your navel would be. And the third one covers your bladder, basically. Okay, now the rib cage kind of flows into the abdominal muscles. Then you get the external oblique, which sit on top of the hip bone, the crest of the hips, right here. Then it comes out slightly because you've got what people, you know, some people refer to it as the hip. It's not the hip. This is the part of the leg bone, which protrudes outwards, so it has a slight angularity to it. Okay, going back to here, the collarbone looks like a stretched out upside down hanger. The shoulders have an angularity to them. They have a slight dip right about here because the top of them has the bone from, that's your arm, your upper arm bone. And then it goes in like that. But if you want to simplify it, just remember that it's angular. And you get a top plane, a side plane, and a slight under plane. Okay, the neck, just like when we did the head, has the V. You got these sternomastoid muscles on either side that join and go into the front. And from the pit of the neck, you can swing out on an arc, and this will help you place the serratus muscles, which help raise and lower your rib cage. And the ribs, they interlace with the ribs. And in comics, they tend to just leave it like that. Okay, so now we're Right here is what they call the crest of the ilium, which is the top of the hip. It's a really important point because muscles attach there. You get a very long muscle that goes this way. It's called the sartorius. It's one of the longest muscles. It is the longest muscle in the body. It starts at the top of the hip, goes to the outside of the inner leg, wraps around the knee where it attaches. But you also got your shin bone, which then continues that curve and goes down into the ankle. So what you get is a very long line for a lot of flow in the body. Now back to the crest of the ilium, you get the sartorius coming off this way. You get another muscle here called the tensor going off this way. And in between them, you get the center of the leg muscle, which in Latin is rectus femoris. Femur, because it's the femur bone. Femoris, I guess, is the leg. And this inserts into the kneecap. The kneecap is, sits halfway across the knee, and basically this muscle comes in, and on either side of it, there's the vastus externus, which means the one on the outside, and the vastus internus, and their tendons, some of it goes through the kneecap, and the rest kind of wrap around the knee. And the knee acts kind of like a pulley. Now below the knee, well below the kneecap, is 
a protrusion of the lower leg bone. So what you get is sort of like a skull-like or, or letter, I mean the number 8. But that's formed by, okay, here's a close-up of the knee. This is the great trochanter, which is the uh, leg bone, the upper leg bone coming here. Then the kneecap is set into it. Meanwhile, on the lower leg bone, you get this protrusion, which provides more surface for all the um, tendons to insert themselves into. Then there's a little bone here. Well, it's little at this point, and it drops this way, and ends up on your outer ankle, which is why these ankles are at this type of angle to each other. This one is from this bone, this one is from this bone. Okay, and let me see if there's anything else. Well, we do the same thing with the arm. I'll do a close-up of the arm. Here's the general. The arms tend to have a curve to them, an inward curve towards the body. The body's on this side. So you get, you get the um, shoulder, the upper arm, and the lower arm, which as we discussed, this is like an elongated diamond shape. This is an oval, and again with the uh, deltoid, you have a top, side, slightly under. The deltoid attaches in here onto the collarbone, as well as from the back and everything like that. Okay, so here's the deltoid muscle, close up. You, it has um, different segments to it. So, basically, I, you, a lot of us just divide it into thirds to keep it simple. Now, you've got the bicep, which everyone knows, and the bicep actually inserts under the pectoral muscles, meaning, but on, as far as the real flesh, it looks like more like this. So, here again, if it's a strong nail, you want to keep it angular. And you have these changes, one, two, and three. In between the bicep and the tricep is a real small muscle on the surface that runs under the bicep called the brachialis. And then you have the tricep muscle. The tricep muscle has most of its mass on the upper part so you tend to see this type of relationship. And then the lower part of it is tendon. The reason it's called a tricep is because it inserts, okay, here's the elbow. So there's a tendon to the center of the elbow. And then if you feel your elbow, there's three points to it. And on each of them, the tricep has a tendon. Now here on the lower arm, the function of each section is to move the section under it. So the upper arm is moved by the shoulder muscle, which is the deltoid muscle. Um, the upper arm moves the lower arm, <coughs> and the lower arm works the hand. So there's a muscle here that is the pronator. It doesn't matter what the name is. There's the pronator, and but what they do is they flip your hand back and forth. Okay. Now, the lower arm is very bony, so really it's only this upper section that's very fleshy. And this is, by the way, the reason this muscle is important is because it's one of the few muscles that actually cuts against the grain. And then you go down towards the uh, wrist, and what you have in the lower part of the arm is all the tendons going over the bone because these extend and contract your fingers. That's their purpose. And that's why it runs along the back of your hand the way it does. So again, this is, you know, this is an underplane. This is underplane 
She always be conscious of it. It's like sculpting. This is under plane. Under the elbow, there's an under plane. Okay, so that's you know, the muscles of the arm.